It's 11% thinner, 15% smaller, and 16% lighter. So why wouldn't it float? So this is iPhone 12. This is one of the four new iPhones that Apple announced a couple of weeks ago, and it's the best iPhone that I've used in the last several years. Probably the best thing about these new generation of iPhones is that we now have some sort of newish design. Gone are the rounded off iPhones, we now have flat sides that feel so much better to hold and in my opinion feel so much more comfortable to use one handed. Now on iPhone 12 you have aluminum flat sides which I personally like a lot better than the stainless steel sides on the Pro, but the trade off here is that you now have a glossy back versus a matte finish on the Pro model. I'm not a fan of glossy phones anymore, it just attracts so much more fingerprint, especially on darker phones and for the last few days I've actually been using Caseology's new line of cases for the iPhone 12 that looks really good and also hides a lot of the fingerprints. My favorite case out of their new iPhone 12 lineup is the new Nano Pop case in Blueberry Navy. And the cool thing about this case is that it offers extra grip thanks to that super soft silicon material that they use on this case, perfect for one-handed use. The dual tone design by the camera cutout also looks great and modern, plus your cameras and screens are protected thanks to the raised edges. Caseology offers a few different colors as you can see here, and they're pretty affordable too. If you want to learn more about the new Nano Pop case, I'll leave a link down below where you can pick one up for yourself. Also, special shout out to Caseology for sponsoring a portion of this video. All right, so another new thing here on the design front is MagSafe. MagSafe, which is not a new tech whatsoever, is now here on iPhone 12. Basically, MagSafe for iPhone is a mounting system and charging system combined into one by using magnets and NFC to have accessories talk to the phone properly. Now to dumb it down for you guys, there's this new MagSafe charger which you can buy for $40 which allows you to wirelessly charge your iPhone up to 15 watts, so long as you're using the 20 watt power brick which is another $20 you have to shell out for. But the upside to that is faster wireless charging than ever before. Now what's cool about MagSafe charger though is that it magnetically attaches to your iPhone 12, so there's no more finding that sweet spot to figure out whether your iPhone is charging or not. So basically it just snaps onto your phone and your phone starts to charge. Now the MagSafe charger isn't the only accessory you can use. There's a ton more you can check out on Apple's website that you can buy, like the wallet attachment, which I actually bought but still on the way to me, but I'm excited to see third party accessories take advantage of this new feature. I'd love to see more wallet variations or maybe a pop socket charger of some sort, those would be really Really cool. While we're in a topic of battery and charging, I didn't really notice anything unusual with the 12's battery life. I can easily get through an entire day just fine with some juice left at night, but as time goes by we'll revisit this phone in a future video and see how it fares. Now when it comes to its display, iPhone 12 didn't really change its screen size unlike the Pro which is now the same size as this regular 12 with a 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR display. This basically just means iPhone 12 is now OLED versus LCD from iPhone 11. So we have OLED across all the models now which means that colors are richer the phone can now produce darker blacks and get a lot brighter too. Now one thing I will note though is that the overall screen on my iPhone 12 looks a tad bit on the warmer side. I'm not sure if it's just me or my eyes or because I've been using the Pixel 5 as my primary phone, but let me know in the comments down below if you noticed it too or if it's just me and I just need to readjust my eyes. Aside from OLED though is the new ceramic shield that Apple is using on all their new iPhones. It's apparently four times stronger than what they previously used and basically means that even if you drop your phone on a concrete floor, you'll likely be okay. However, some reports are saying that the screen are now more scratch prone, but over the past week I've had my iPhone 12, I haven't really noticed any scratches on the screen. But if you really want to be careful, just pick up the Nano Pop case from Caseology and call it a day. Alright, so after using iPhone 12 for the last week, I didn't really experience any lag or app incompatibility issues. All of the apps that I use on a regular basis, like Instagram, Twitter, Lightroom, just to name a few apps, didn't really crash once, nor did I notice those apps struggling. Everything I threw at it seems to be handling everything really well and ran just like it should. Every year it seems like Apple is always outdoing themselves in this category. Now I'm not trying to nerd out in this video so I'll just say that with A14 Bionic on iPhone 12 it's basically just like A13 Bionic on iPhone 11 and 11 Pro but just a little bit faster and you'll now be able to shoot in Dolby Vision HDR on a camera app which leads me to my favorite thing about smartphones, the cameras. So 
iPhone 12 got new cameras and new features this year. I'm not gonna be talking about iPhone 12 Pro or Pro Max and their new Pro camera system because, well, I don't have it. So I'll just have to focus on iPhone 12 here. But I'll definitely be making a separate video on the Pro line in the near future once the Pro Max is available. So the main wide camera is much better this year. The new wide camera now brings in 27% more light, so whether you're taking photos out in good lighting conditions or in low light in the city, you shouldn't have issues with autofocus, colors, or sharpness. Now both ultra wide and the wide camera can now also shoot in night mode, which works really well. Now in my experience, the photos look a little bit more sharper. However, the photos do look more natural and not as processed as last year's iPhone, and the new Smart HDR3 on iPhone 12 really brings in the entire experience together, giving you a more balanced looking photo. Now in low light scenario, this is where that new lower aperture comes in. That f1.6 aperture on the main camera is definitely noticeable. There's less noise in the shadows, which is something I've always liked about iPhone's image processing. I noticed that with iPhone 12 in low light, the colors still look saturated while keeping exposure and contrast intact. And it also gets better with night mode, which again, you can now shoot in both wide and ultra wide. Now two things that are missing here on iPhone 12 is that LiDAR sensor which helps with portrait mode at night as well as a telephoto lens. Unfortunately portrait mode in low light is only for the Pro model and you also won't get Apple Pro RAW format when that comes out. So if you really care about the cameras definitely look into the Pro lineup this year. It's definitely geared towards photographers and content creators. Now when it comes to video I mentioned earlier iPhone 12 can now record in Dolby Vision HDR which basically just means colors are more true to life, you're getting 10-bit HDR video recording, better dynamic range, and overall a better looking video. Now, if you want to watch a video about Dolby Vision HDR, go check out Andrew Edwards' video which I'll link down below. Now, if you don't have a TV, monitor, or phone that can properly display Dolby Vision HDR, you won't really see the difference between a non-HDR video versus Dolby Vision. But since this feature is here and readily available and with more people upgrading to the new iPhones, we'll most likely see more Dolby Vision HDR videos out in the wild thanks to iPhone 12. So if you're a content creator and don't have a ton of money to buy super expensive gear that costs thousands of dollars, iPhone 12 seems like a really good option right now. You can take incredible looking photos even at night, you can shoot cinema-like videos thanks to Dolby Vision HDR, and the best thing about it is it's also your phone, so you don't have to carry around two separate items with you. Overall, I'm really happy with iPhone 12. The newish design is probably my favorite thing about this new iPhone. It's really fast thanks to that five nanometer A14 Bionic processor. Now, I would have loved to see ProMotion on these new iPhones, but to be quite honest, I never really thought about iPhones having slow displays. It always felt really smooth, and as someone who's used a ton of newer Android devices, I know when a display feels slow to the touch, and I didn't really notice that with the iPhone 12. Now, the cameras are slightly better than the 11 Pro and shines brighter in low light too, but I'll wait for the Pro Max to come out and see how much better those cameras really are. The Pro Max has all the newest camera features like the new 65mm telephoto lens, sensor shift, OIS, and a 47% larger sensor on the wide camera. Now even if I hate big phones and I notice a huge difference in a camera system, maybe, just maybe, I'll switch. But for now, I'm in love with the iPhone 12.